My name is Sam Vaknin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. Both Russia and China are struggling with economic crises brought on by an ill-conceived war of aggression and by the glacial bursting of a bubble economy, respectively. <laughs> the great beneficiaries of all this mayhem are India and Central Asia, which are booming. According to the latest report of the EBRD, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, dated September 2023, these economies are expected to grow by between 4.6% Kyrgyzstan and 7.5% Tajikistan this year. China's reopening after the pandemic is not the reason. Russia's war in Ukraine is the reason, as well as China's meltdown. Capital flight from both these polities, as well as smaller countries such as Belarus, is fueling the economies of their immediate neighbors. The idea is to avoid Western sanctions by relocating businesses into non-sanctioned but friendly territories. This stratagem is on its last legs though. The Western coalition has begun to protest the subterfuge. Central Asia has become a sanction-busting and dodging hub. Prohibited goods, including electrical machinery, instruments, spare parts, and transport equipment, are imported into the likes of Kazakhstan and even India, and then re-exported to Russia at a hefty premium, according to data published by Bruegel, a venerable European think tank. The Central Asian Bureau for Analytical Reporting released mind-boggling figures. Between January and October 2022, Kazakh exports of electronic goods to Russia have skyrocketed by 1,800% to 549 million euros. Central Asia has always served as a back door to an ostracized Russia. Suitcase and shuttle trade, as well as illegal re-exportation, smuggling, smuggling, not to put too fine a point on it, all have been a staple of these economies since the Russian Revolution. Such illicit activities are aimed to offset the indirect damage inflicted by Western sanctions on these landlocked polities whose only exit routes are via Russian territory. One example, Ukraine's attacks on Black Sea facilities can place in jeopardy Kazakhstan's ability to export oil via the Caspian Pipeline Consortium Terminal. Russians much prefer Russian clones Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, which are also members in the Eurasian Economic Union, a poor man's wannabe BRICS. <laughs> the other members in this union are Armenia, whose hostility to Russia is growing in the wake of the Nagorno-Karabakh debacle, and Belarus, the hapless puppet state. And still, the Union offers harmonized customs and duties, free trade zones, common trade regulation, and access to bigger markets. Ironically, the biggest beneficiaries of this tumult are Turkey and India, both of them far from being Russia's pals. The peoples of Central Asia are by and large Turkic. As far as India goes, it offers time travel to a much earlier version of China, prior to its ascendance. India is an opportunity to participate in another Asian miracle, starting at the ground floor. It is also truly non-aligned with either West or East. So this year, India is expected to grow by 6.2%, according to the IMF compared to China's unrealistic IMF growth projection of 5.2%. Optimistic. Still, this is all a one-day miracle. The clear outcome of the conflict in Ukraine. Once this conflict is over, one way or another, and once Russia's civil war yields an uncontested new leader, these firms and their owners, around 500,000 strong, will revert to the motherland and to its much larger, more sophisticated market. In the meantime, emigrant workers from 
Central Asia keep propping families and economies back home with their remittances from Russia, says the EBRD. They work in construction, farming, hospitality, and similar jobs, which the indigenous Russians turn their noses up at. Here's the rub. The West cannot expect Central Asians to immolate themselves on the altar of the anti-Russia holy crusade. Such a sacrifice is unreasonable. The West should offer Central Asians access to its labor markets, as well as alternative pipelines and land routes to export oil and commodities. To shift their economically driven allegiance from Russia would require treating the Central Asians the way Ukraine is being accommodated, nothing less.